and welcome to SCW The Wrestling Podcast on Facebook Live. You are also listening uh, via, hopefully, on YouTube, SCW The Wrestling Channel. Uh, we're back. That's right. Uh, myself, Steve, here in the hot seat, along with George, who you can hopefully see on Facebook Live right now. George, how are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to be back. I'll tell you, it's hopefully everyone that's actually watching this is going to kind of feel like um, they're going to get out of their seats. Just like, you know, when Triple H returned uh, in 2002 after being off for a long time with a leg injury, we're like that leg injury, but we've actually come back into action now just in time to headline at the times of WrestleMania. So uh, I'm hoping that everyone's really excited and happy to have us back. Uh, but do remember, but as well that you can like and share the videos as well. Please let your friends know about this. And uh, yeah, we'd love to spread the word of SC. Um, we're hoping to be back out um, pretty much going into WrestleMania season. Uh, we'd like to maybe try and do maybe a podcast, maybe at least once a week. George, does that kind of float your boat? Yeah, I think that sounds good. I think definitely this is the best time to be a wrestling fan uh, sort of of the year. So we have to be there sort of covering it. I'm certainly up for doing a regular podcast at least once a week, certainly. I, I think so as well. But uh, we're going to kick things off then by talking uh, quickly, briefly about the Elimination Chamber. It seems so long ago already uh, we're, after we've had Monday Night Raw last night, which was, if I dare say, quite an eventful show, actually, looking back at Monday Night Raw. But we'll touch on the Elimination Chamber first. And what I really uh, like about the discussion that me and you are going to have about this chamber uh, is the fact that uh, I quite enjoyed the event where from uh, from what you were telling me, you wasn't so hot about the event. So I actually want to see the contrast of, of what I found positive and what you didn't find so positive. Because normally we see eye to eye on a lot, George. So I- I'm quite interested in seeing what the, uh, you know, the clashes of this particular event. So, George, please give me uh, your thoughts uh, of the Elimination Chamber event this year. I think it did what it needed to do. I think certainly it builds the show up to WrestleMania, but... Um... I found it very, very predictable. A lot of, There wasn't really a massive amount coming out of the chamber for me. I think a lot of it, you could tell that was going to happen. I think, particularly with Roman Reigns winning, I think it's a bit annoying, really. If you look at the, the bigger picture, Dave Meltzer said last year, in April last year, the main event of WrestleMania this year is going to be Brock and Roman. It's just, I, I, would, I would have thought WWE would have sh- shaken it up a bit. They might still do, though. They might add Braun into the match to make it a triple threat at WrestleMania, maybe, but I haven't heard that today from what I've heard. I think uh, certainly it wasn't a bad match. I think the main people that came out of the show with credibility was Braun Strowman. I think it, clearly he, this guy is superhuman. He's been booked amazingly. It's just a shame really for him to go through that and get all them pinfalls just to then go, sort of get beat by Roman Reigns again, which is a bit frustrating. I don't know if, I don't know what you felt of that, that, the finish of that sort of main event. Uh, personally, I mean, I completely agree with you on the predictability factor. I mean, of the predictions, normally we, we throw our predictions on uh, for, for all these pay-per-views, and we haven't done it for recent months, but um, I was the same as you, more or less, I think almost every match was correct. The only one I was going into the chamber, not certain of the result, I think was Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt. I was fairly confident with the rest of it. And like you say, it was predictable, but I just, I thought that what was given to us on the show itself, when you, when you look past the fact that there's no shocks and there's no... Uh, surprises coming here. What the actual content I thought was was quite impressive, particularly from the women. I thought the women stole the show for me. I really enjoyed the the first elimination chamber for the women. Uh, I thought they did a great job. Um, looking at it as well, I don't think any of them uh, their match was any worse than a lot of recent men's chamber matches. So uh, for me personally, I thought that they, they came out with a lot of credibility and it's sort of a thing that you could perhaps expect again next year. And where there's been such backlash before, when uh, I think it was Sasha Banks and Charlotte did the Hell in a Cell before, didn't get a positive uh, review that. Uh, we see the the one money in the bank, that wasn't so big on the positive reviews either. But the Royal Rumble got a good review and it seems that the Women's Elimination Chamber seems to have a fairly positive uh, from the internet response. So it seems that perhaps maybe we'll get another one of these in future, uh, which for me would be very good. But I would like to know your thoughts with, with the women on the show, George. No, I thought it was all right. I didn't think it was a bad way to start the show. I think um, when you look at it, sort of the people in the match, I thought it was OK. I just thought um, Alexa Bliss at the end with her promo, I thought she really lost her way to a certain degree. And I think she really, really struggled sort of to be able to sort of uh, basically deliver that killer promo. Although although ultimately she came out as a heel at the end, I just thought it was ropey in parts. I just thought the promo wasn't really convincing. Ultimately, they are building her up as being a really bad heel. But I think this is only ultimately going to lead to a Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss match at WrestleMania almost. I just think really uh, Alexa Bliss at the moment, she does seem to be on a fantastic role. This is obviously a second run as a women's champion. But for me, I just don't think they did a lot other than building up sort of Alexa Bliss in the match and also potentially teasing a Sasha Blanks versus Bailey match down the line. I just didn't think there was enough. Really. I really didn't think there was enough 
bumps as such or high spots or anything like that. I thought a lot of the match was mainly storytelling, such as sort of the part when Alexa Bliss is running away, sort of hiding across the cage and stuff like that. I just felt it was it got boring quite quickly for me personally. Ah, fair enough. They each had their own with it, but it's good to get your perspective. Personally, for me, I love the fact there was storytelling in that match. I mean, compared to the men's, there wasn't so much of a story to the men's match. It was more just Braun Strowman killing everybody and then losing to Reigns at the end. So I, I kind of feel the reverse. I like the idea that there was uh, almost three teams of two, almost, because you had Absolution, Bailey and Sasha were together. And of course, there was the term, which... We could kind of see coming, but it was good to see it delivered um, and particularly going to go back to that again with Monday Night Raw uh, a bit soon, because particularly the Monday Night Raw, I loved even more than the Chamber. Uh, but also you look there and think that Mickey James and Exabyss didn't even have their chance to um, have the storytelling that was built towards in the Chamber, which for me was the only real, real minor of the show. Really, I would have loved to have seen in that Chamber uh, Mickey and Alexa together, either working together or going against each other, because when it came where they were out on Monday Night Raw, uh, it almost felt like it didn't really make sense uh, with Mickey James actually being on the hillside when uh, a week previously she was actually on the Faces tag team of a six-woman tag match, and this, side, this week she's on the hills. So that really wasn't explained properly for me, but other than that, I particularly enjoyed it. There was a couple of high spots in the match. Um, I, I did like the, um, is it the Twisted Bliss where she does the the the, the fit, her finisher from the from the top of the, the pod? I, I quite enjoyed that moment as well. Um, but I, I kind of thought it was a, a good match on the whole. And I personally, I give it the thumbs up myself. But um, uh, Alexa, uh, Alexa, sorry, Oscar and Nia Jax, uh, again, another match. This one, like you would agree as well, predictable. Uh, it was quite short as well, if brutally honest. But um, I feel, again, the message was delivered the way it needed to be done was that Nia lost. Uh, it almost was kind of fluky the way she did lose, but then she kept credibility. And like you say, perhaps going against Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania, she put Oscar through the barricade, which is normally a spot reserved for the men. So I love the fact that the women got their chance to do that on the show. And I actually thought that it, it, it carried a lot of credibility when Nia Jax did that to Oscar. Uh, what were your thoughts with that? Yeah, I thought it was an OK match. I think it's I'm getting the fear the feeling now almost that a sucker is almost like the female equivalent of Roman Reigns. She's particularly unstoppable. I'm just slightly concerned that WWE are booking her into a place now where they're not going to be able to sort of get away with it. Obviously, I think she'll go all the way to WrestleMania and win the belt. I think she's going to beat Charlotte, I think, for the title. I think 100%. I think that's now done. The problem is, how where, where do you give her that first loss? She's almost on like a Goldberg-esque loss now. And on Sunday, clearly at the show, she was, majority of the match, she was looking slightly ropey in parts. I thought she was clearly on the defensive for most of the match, but somehow she still got the win there, which it wasn't bad. It was good to see them to keeeping up with. So I'm glad they didn't give her the loss there. It wasn't a place to give her a loss. But for me, I don't know how long this push can go. Please, she'll get the belt at WrestleMania. It's where they go next with her, to who they challenge. I really would like to see her sort of in a programme with somebody that's going to challenge her, so to speak. She's, she's been pretty unstoppable since she's come up, to be fair, from NXT, in my opinion. I, I kind of agree that maybe Charlotte is there. I mean, there has been some rumours now that maybe she might be going for Alexa Bliss instead, but I still believe with you that she will go for Charlotte. That'd in be end, a great but... match. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That'll be a fantastic match. I'm actually, if that is the case, if we do do Charlotte versus Osaka, I think that's a fantastic match. I think mean, clearly, even if you can tell who you think is going to win, I think both them two, they need to be given time. Like the women have been given time in recent pay per views, and this could be an absolute classic. I, I would really think that's a WrestleMania worthy match for me personally. I agree with you. And do you. So you're you're certain that she will beat Charlotte because for me, I kind of have this feeling that they built her up so much that she maybe WrestleMania is kind of the place for the fall. Do you feel that maybe that she could lose at WrestleMania? I'll tell you what, I think, is it... I'll tell you what they could do if they really want to shock people. I think it's damaging though doing this. Is say she beats Charlotte, you're then going to get the cash in for Camilla. Is that the place to do it? At WrestleMania, you know what I mean. WrestleMania is going to be full of some sort of shocks, and I think. But then, do she put her first ever women's title win? by uh, sort of cashing. That's the thing. What do you reckon, Steve? I really hope that's not what they're going to do. Um, I have a theory with Carmella because, um, I mean, I, I've, I've been watching, obviously, some other YouTubers and a lot of people are questioning where and when this is going to happen. WrestleMania makes the most sense. For me, I want to see a storyline now. Uh, we've never seen it with a Money in the Bank cashing uh, where they are running out of time. I want to see that storyline play where all of a sudden it's no longer in favour of the person with the briefcase. It's almost in favour of the champion because Carmella needs to cash that in and she's running out of time. I would love it to go down almost to the wire. And if you wanted my personal opinion as well, if, if Oscar happens to go to SmackDown, 
I would like to see on the draft after or the shake up, whatever they're going to do this year, I would love to see Carmella go to Monday Night Raw with a briefcase and that way she cash in on the Raw champion instead. I think that would have a lot more credibility and that would work a lot better. Um, I believe that the first women's Money in the Bank holder should actually win the championship. I think it would be damaging for Carmella not to actually become champion. I just don't want to see her uh, do it on the SmackDown side, particularly if Oscar actually comes over to SmackDown, because I agree with you, it's very damaging and it's a cheap way to ruin uh, almost two and a half years worth of good work. Yeah, no, so I, th- my- I would agree with that spot. I think you're spot on with what you said there. I totally agree with that. I think um, it makes sense they could do it with her on Raw. It depends on where they go, though. They look like, so if we look at the bigger picture, say your sucker does somehow get the title at WrestleMania. Not somehow, I think she will. Um, I think next, the next, the her first challenge is probably likely to be, it's going to be probably Ember Moon, which will be uh, very good. If we could see that on the main stage, although we saw it in NXT, I think that could be interesting TV for a sucker's first title defence. What do you reckon before we get any further? It's unfinished business. Uh, I mean, Ember Moon was so close to getting the victory. Uh, she's tried twice. I remember a feud, and we're going to go back a little way here, back to the mid uh, to late 90s. Raven and Tommy Dreamer in ECW. Now, Tommy Dreamer would face Raven, and they would have a heated rivalry. And every time they would face, Tommy Dreamer would lose. And it would just make you drive to want to see that much more, because Dreamer needed to get the win. And he only ever got the win, I believe, on Raven's last night on ECW, before he moved over to WCW. So for me, I, I think that that would be kind of an compelling way to bring Ember Moon into the main roster, because that gives her a reason to come up. She's got unfinished business with Oscar. She's lost to her twice at takeovers can she do it on the main stage i actually would then like to see her lose on the main stage to begin with and really try and build her up to the point where maybe another year down the line when she finally gets the win it would really have a payoff and it would really mean something yeah definitely i'm interested definitely to see what they can do as i said earlier it'd be interesting to see how they can consistently book osaka once she gets the belt to not then eventually give the title up that makes sense it'd be interesting to see what they do but no certainly interesting and what they're doing with the women's division at the moment is is kind of entertaining i think it's good that they're getting this chance, the same chance as, the, as their ca- counterparts in the men's division. There's almost not much more now left to do for no. first time ever. They've almost done everything. I think uh, one thing I said before, maybe they could do maybe a queen in the ring uh, in the future. Would you like to see that? It's a good idea. I like it. I've never really thought about that. But I, I, why not? I think if it has the same prestige as the original king of the ring, then why not? It would make it would make total century. It's a good way to give somebody a potential title shot down the line other than money in the bank, if that makes sense. Yeah, completely agree with that. I think it makes a lot of sense. Quickly touching on the men's matches, um, Titus Worldwide losing again to the bar. Uh, they did again on Raw as well. Uh, do we see a breakup with them two coming up at some point? Because they're losing a lot. There was also a tease of breakup on the Mixed Match Challenge last week. Um, do we think that, that uh, Apollo and Titus O'Neill has got a, a future together? Or is it just a job of tag team and it doesn't really matter? It's a job of tag team. Really. I don't understand how they're in this position where they are challenging for the title. It just shows you how stagnant the current tag team division is on Raw, if that makes sense. I think it's really, really disappointing. I really would have rather seen somebody else in this position, if I'm going to be honest with you. Do you think at WrestleMania the bar have got uh, the good brothers, Gallows and Anderson, as well as the Revival? Potentially. Uh, why not? And the thing is, if you believe the other sort of rumours going around as well, uh, apparently Authors of Pain are due to be coming up. So I think whoever comes out of that match, Authors of Pain will be a nice fit, but they're not going to bring anybody up before WrestleMania, I don't think. I think WrestleMania will be the final payoff. And I think out of the tag teams you mentioned, like maybe the Revival will, will get the belt, but I don't see it. I think they're, WWE seems to be quite set on, on the bar at the moment, maybe because there's nobody else to a degree at the moment, unfortunately. No, I agree. It actually is to a point. Do you think even as well that it would make sense to have, because the with the co-branding pay-per-views going forward, let's let's switch it up just a touch for the moment. We, I know we've not spoke about Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, but we can do that in Raw. Um, we look at that and we say with the co-branding pay-per-views, would it make sense that maybe some of the belts are unified going forward rather than having two champions of every show? Because it's going to be to a point now where it's going to be a cluster of championships in every pay-per-view. Could we see at WrestleMania the Usos versus the Bar? Why not? If they're short of tag teams, then, yeah, well, why not? The fizz. I just hope the WWE don't make this mistake they did before. Like, when they got rid of the Intercontinental title for the United States, I think, for me, they have to stick to the lineage. They have to stick to the original titles, like the Intercontinental title, instead of a WCW United States title. Does that, does that make sense? It does. For me, I think both belts yeah. need to stay. Yeah. I wouldn't get rid of either of them. No. I would have a... Because uh, each show has to have a respective yeah. title, I believe. But I believe that maybe the uh, WWE Championship, the Women's Championship and the Tag Titles, they should maybe become merged and then be on both shows. I would also like to see a Trios Championship. How would you feel about that? 
it could be interesting as long as they get the right people in that position to be sort of a three man team in for going for the side. I think it, it depends really. That might work, but it's giving them time on TV. That's it's way it's way you slot them in and it's putting the right people together. If you've got, if you've got a, a trio championship made up of Brizango and the Bludgeon Brothers and people like that, it's not really going to be fun. It's just going to be more and more filler, unfortunately. It would be a cluster fest, wouldn't it? But it would be uh, I mean, wouldn't it? Let's be fair. Uh, you, you can sign that away now, Steve. Write the checks now. Cash it in. Cash it in, mate. There'll be money all, all day long there. I'm joking. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely, yeah. indeed. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, with the co-branded pay-per-views, are you in favour of it? Yeah, why not? I think it makes sense. I mean, it, it seems a shame to have to wait so long to see certain wrestlers on shows. Co-branded events are where it used to be, but even before the brand split. I think, why not? It'd be nice to see wrestlers go against each other again that haven't gone against each other for a while. It makes those events more special as well, Definitely. doesn't it? Let's be honest, because if I mean it's only twelve pay per views a year now. Battleground has been turned, fallen to the wayside, same as uh, Payback. So now we've got just twelve events this year. Uh, so it means everyone's only get eleven chances on pay per views. So uh, for me, I think it's a good thing going forward. I think it adds more specialness to these shows. The only thing I'm scared about is now that they might all become four hours long. Oh, that could be scary. What I would say, Steve, I don't know if you noticed this. Is one one key point is. They've WWE have clearly lost the massive rivalry going from SmackDown to Raw. There's no real dissension between the brands at all at the moment, so it does make sense to know that and just literally have everybody on the same brand. I think that's that's been all over you. Would you agree with that? I feel that the, the the Survivor Series, what we see, seems to be the one time they do it. I I personally agree with you. It should be all year round. Personally, for me, if it was my personal choice, I would have no draft. I would have simply what would be seen as gang warfare. All year round, Raw versus SmackDown, if there's an opportunity to take someone from one brand and bring them to the other, like you used to see in the Monday Night Wars, why not have that? Where, you know, the first ever Nitro, we see Lex Luger turn up on, on Nitro instead of being a WWE superstar when the outsiders got drafted in. And we see uh, other people go backwards and forwards. The Radicals, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn, uh, Dean Malenko, all trading to WWE. Why not have that? But of course, within the company where they have control over everybody anyway. Uh, and there's a point where at the moment, I mean, John Cena this week is going to go to SmackDown Live. Well, why not everybody? There seems to be a free spot. I've not got an opportunity here. Maybe I could explore my my options somewhere else. Would, I think, would that I think be based compelling on, TV? I think, yeah, I think based on what you said, I think the perfect person to have been in this type of scenario would have been the whole thing with Ronda Rousey. Not just she signing for all. I think SmackDown should have put a bid in for her. They need to make her the hottest free agent, which is basically what they've tried to do. But they haven't done it right so far. I know they're gonna. I know they're ultimately building towards a tag match at WrestleMania with Ronda Rousey. But you still could have teased SmackDown trying to get her on board. And I think that I think that was missing. I don't know. I don't know if you agree with that before we go on to something else. I completely agree with you. And actually, it does lead perfectly to where I want to go to next, which is uh, clearly the biggest topic in wrestling. Ronda Rousey has signed the contract. Uh, first off, what did you think of the Elimination Chamber? And secondly, uh, rather than skipping, because it's at the very end of Monday Night Raw, uh, what were your thoughts with uh, the, the way it played out on Raw as well? We'll do, we'll do them in two parts. So Ronda Rousey, Elimination Chamber. I thought it did what it needed to do. Clearly, they have to start building this match they're going to have at WrestleMania. And the elements of the four people that are going to be in the match were there at the Elimination Chamber. So it was good to see her on the show. It's interesting to see how, how she adapts from that UFC mixed martial arts background into being a full-fledged WWE superstar. I think it's a massive change for her. But no, I thought it was all right. I thought it did what it needed to do. Um, I, My only issue, really, before I go into Raw, is with Raw and with the Elimination Chamber so far... Ronda Rousey's had it handed to her to a certain degree. Kurt Angle's been the one that's taken, obviously, the hit. It's very much up in the hills at the moment. They've got another six weeks of this now before they get to this WrestleMania tag team match of Kurt Angle and um, Ronda Rousey facing Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Do you think it's sort of it's very one-sided at the moment, this, side, this part of the feud? It seems to be Ronda Rousey's very much not done too much, really, so far. Uh, for me, uh, looking at it, we'll go back to the chamber, like you say, because it's the way it took place first. I found the segment a bit strange, but I quite enjoyed it at the same time. It was one of those where you look at it and say, well, to be honest, perhaps could they have written it better? Yeah, maybe they could have written it better. But I did kind of find the flu comment that Triple H said about Kurt Angle quite amusing. Um, uh, that, that's why his head was all over the place. Clearly, uh, when you saw Kurt Angle on Raw, he was backtracking. Obviously, he's been given a lot of stuff said to him backstage, which we didn't see. Therefore, he's come out and said, I'm going to make the apologies. But then he takes the hit. Uh, which is obviously probably for opening his mouth to begin with, uh, which is probably what we're going to learn at a later date, that everything is, is said is true. Um, but for me, looking at it, I mean, Ronda looks badass. Uh, that's what I quite like about her. Her promo Elimination Chamber is started off very shaky, uh, but as soon as she had to turn it on, 
uh, she turned it on. And uh, for me, I think she's going to be she's going to be very powerful on the main roster. She's going to be treated as a really big deal. Um, and I personally, I, at the moment, I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to seeing where it will lead to. Uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly how they're going to feel six weeks up for this. But um, uh, for me, at the moment, I'm invested. This is a storyline that I, I'm definitely wanting to see how it's going to play out. Uh, and that's that's good. Because yeah. that's what yeah. we want. We want to we want to be invested from the start. Because if you're not invested from week one, you're definitely not going to be invested by week six. So um, for me, it, it's played out okay to begin with. Yeah, definitely. I think, as I said, I think uh, a couple of good, good things they've done so far. They've immediately associated Ronda Rousey in a high spot. So her ending Raw, uh, I think it's a great idea to have her in the focal points. People are talking about it constantly. I think it's interesting. Definitely interesting that they've paired her with Kurt Angle. Obviously, the early rumours and reports were that WWE were looking a uh, bigger wrestler to tag with her to go against sort of Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. But I think her angles are good enough, although we've seen that already. We've seen him recently in the ring as well. It may not be the workhorse he once was, but Kurt Angle and Triple H, I think in this match, will do the majority of the workload, which I think protects Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey isn't an established wrestler. She's got a big name, a big draw from another sport. I think this is going to be really good. This might be a WrestleMania-worthy match. It's just where they go from next. I'm interested to see how they do it. And it'll be interesting to see how they keep Ronda Rousey away from Stephanie McMahon for the next six weeks. I think that's going to make some creative watching, so to speak. Definitely. I 100% agree with that. And I think it's uh, going to be an interesting watch. Uh, just one more uh, thought with Ronda Rousey. Um, say she becomes undefeated for a year and Oscar remains undefeated for another year. WrestleMania 35? Sounds good. It's a long time, though. It's a long time to keep Oscar undefeated unless you keep a champion for a whole year, which it, 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 things could happen. You never know. They do announce matches in advance. I remember when they announced The Rock and John Cena a year in advance. You never, never say never, but no. That definitely could be interesting. The way that when she debuted at the Royal Rumble, I really thought that um, sort of they were hinting to her challenging for the title. But no, it's good to see her in this spot. And I think she's definitely going to bring something to that division. I think uh, it'll be great. I just hope that um, sort of that this match gets a decent amount of time and it's not just made up of gimmicks, so to speak. I think you've got to certainly protect some of the wrestlers in there. But Triple H and Kurt Angle have got a lot of history. I really hope that WWE go back and show the history in detail for the newer fans of, of Triple H and Kurt Angle's previous feuds. I think that's quite critical really for people to be informed of what happened before really i, I agree with that I, I don't know if it would necessarily happen uh because we know current wwe but um i, I definitely think that it would uh, make a lot of sense creatively uh, it would help invest people more into that rivalry um even with without just seeing what's the simple punch so far and i mean at the moment they're not even really brought in survivor series which of course that happened as well where where uh, Kurt Angle was eliminated because of triple h as well so uh, there is a lot of recent history and there's a lot of old history which you're right they could dig out through the archives and they've got the archives they've got the network so why not use it to the advantage yeah definitely why not i think you've got to use the tools you've got but no i'll, I'll pat on the back to for WWE. it's a, it started well so far i'll definitely give them that i think they they got where they needed to go. Clearly, based on Raw and the Elimination Chamber and Ronda Rousey, the match they want to build, they've started well, in my opinion. I think fair play to WWE, they've done well so far. Indeed, indeed. So, your your opinion with Raw overall as we go through the other topics of Monday Night Raw very, very briefly? I think it's OK. I think it's always hard coming off a pay-per-view, but in WrestleMania season, it's very much a case of basically doing a puzzle, in essence, in a nutshell. You're basically building a puzzle segment by segment. And there are tees and hints and matches already. So if we go into I'll go to a few matches of WrestleMania, Steve, where I think they're going to go. I'll ask you my opinion of you to a certain degree and see what you think of these matches. So clearly, obviously, um, WWE are building now towards a triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship between The Miz, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. For me, if this match happens, this could be one of the best matches in probably WrestleMania history, to be fair, as on top of the AJ Styles-Nakamura match. I think both of them two matches, if they take place, which AJ Styles-Nakamura is going to take place, is going to be absolutely amazing. What do you think? Uh, I was praying that there would be a triple threat match. I've seen the rumours for a long time it's going to be Strowman and Miz, and I just, for me, that didn't work. It didn't connect. Um, there is a reason why Strowman hasn't got an assigned WrestleMania opponent yet, but we'll come to that in a bit. Um, but for me, I'm really happy with the idea of uh, this triple threat match. It works for me. Um, I, I, for me as well, Balor and, and Rollins, they're, they're going to be definitely the workload of what's making this match great. The Miz with his attitude and the way he's probably going to count, they try and get out of the match uh, the whole way through, could make some good television. I agree with you, Styles Nakamura, the Re Wrestle Kingdom match from, uh, from a couple of years ago was one of my favourite matches of all time. Definitely my favourite match that whole calendar year. So uh, I I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to play out. Uh, what other matches then have you got uh, that you wish to discuss about that's rumoured for WrestleMania? We've got Braun Strowman's rumoured opponent of um, Elias. What do, you, what do you make of that? That's going to be something that I don't know sort of 
it's, it's going to be interesting if it happens, but they're certainly keeping Braun Strowman spare at the moment. As you said, ultimately, a lot of that's down to what took place with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar on this past week's Raw, which you can go into a bit later in a bit of detail if you wish. But I think I think clearly WrestleMania is coming along. It's going to be, it looks like a steady card. Let's go into the million dollar question. I, I had a question before we started this podcast by Christopher Daly. I'm going to give him a shout out. He asked of both of us, what do we think John Cena will be doing at WrestleMania? Do you want to go first or should I answer it first? I think we've got the same answer. Yeah, it's one. It's, it's basically one word, to be fair. Um, should, 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 we, should we do on a count of three? Yeah, go on. One, two, three. Undertaker. Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, the Undertaker. I think clearly the seeds have been planted uh, this week's Raw, which John Cena is obviously going to go on a quest. I think maybe what WWE might do is I think they might give John Cena uh, a world title match at Fastlane, I think potentially against AJ Styles. And I think ultimately he'll come up short. And I think this will then lead to... Can John Cena be saved to a certain degree? And then obviously he's going in against The Undertaker. And it's almost like both of them have got nothing to lose. So it isn't a match based on the pop this past week on Raw, where I think it's definitely a WrestleMania-worthy match. I don't think WWE can lose. Either way they put this, I think everybody's a winner, really. Uh, no Fans aren't going to have probably allegiance to anybody, I don't think. I think it's going to be something that... One for the archive, one that's a lot overdue, really. It's almost like Rock and Hogan from WrestleMania 18. It's got that feel about it. So, and but we we know as well for the Undertaker, he comes back. It's one last match. Um, for me, I'm sort of I'm sort of against it in one way, but in another way, the match that he had probably isn't the way he wants to go out when he lost to Roman Reigns. So, uh, for me, if he comes in, Undertaker has to win. What do you feel? Yeah, it depends on what you're going to do. If this is Undertaker's very last match, you send him out with a win or a loss. So it's all down to what they do, really. The problem is neither one of them have got anything really to fight for. I think uh, sort of both of them, like John Cena isn't the wrestler he once was. Undertaker's no longer got a streak. I think it makes things very interesting, though. I'm just interested to see what this does and where this goes. I just think this is going to be very much two baby faces that are legends, ultimately, that are going to get some time in the ring. I'd like to see him do some sort of angle with it, maybe make it a casket match or make it something, but... I don't know. I think it's going to be, it'll be an interesting match. Just I just hope that um, however it finishes, that it's almost like a, a one-show feud. I don't really want to see months and months of this. I'd much rather see it at WrestleMania. Have it as a WrestleMania moment and then move forward. Obviously, Undertaker's probably going to be gone again then for, for a while, I guess. Quite a long time, probably. Yeah, unless it's his last match. But I agree with you. Either they can put Cena perhaps tonight in the Fatal Five way to make it a six-pack challenge. Or we could see maybe Cena against Nakamura and Nakamura puts his Royal Rumble title shot on the line. Uh, either way, whatever Cena does, I expect him to lose uh, and, and then progress to take on The Undertaker. So I completely agree with you. That was the million dollar question. Of course, guys, if you have any questions while you're watching this, please whack them in there right now in the comment section. Uh, and George will, uh, will will check those out and will post that to us. And we'll have, actually have a discussion right here live on the air. So if you've got anything you want to ask, uh, now is a very good time to stick those questions in. Um, I'll quickly touch then, uh, going back to Monday Night Raw very quickly. I said I really enjoyed the Bailey turn on Sasha, uh, where she refused to take the tag. Then she went back into the tag match to help Oscar out, but refused to help Sasha. Um, I, I really think that this actually is, is going to have a bit of uh, a bit of spice to this rivalry. I, I'm quite looking forward to this. It's probably going to be a kickoff match at WrestleMania. That's my only fear with it. But um, do, you, do you look forward to seeing uh, Bailey and Sasha finally on the main roster? I think it'd be it's good. This has been a long time coming. I think the Sasha Banks heel turn is long overdue, and I think there's definitely more to it. I think they'll get through WrestleMania season, and then maybe it will happen. But no, I think this definitely could be a match for the kickoff, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I think both wrestlers came out of a lot of a credit in the elimination chamber. Clearly, they were the workhorses of this match, besides Mickey James, in my opinion. Definitely, definitely. And also, I mean, uh, Bray Wyatt did his best uh, Taylor Swift impression this week. Look what you made me do after losing to uh, Matt Hardy at uh, the uh, Elimination Chamber. Um, have we had enough of this feud now? Yeah, uh, it, it seems is. that it's going to go on again. Um, I know I've heard you discuss this before, that you would prefer this went into a final deletion or a house of horrors. But that really can't take place at a WrestleMania, can it? Never say never. Though. Don't forget, Steve, they once did a Hollywood Batlock brawl at WrestleMania, which was based largely outside, which which was, for anybody who doesn't know, it was Rowdy Roddy Piper, the legend, and Goldust. Never say never. WrestleMania is the place sometimes to debut new matches. But for me, I, I just I hope this rest, this match is done by WrestleMania. We've seen it numerous times now. Both wrestlers are losing stock as the feud goes on for me. There's neither advancement. I think sort of Matt Hardy or Broken, Woken Matt Hardy is now known. I think he's, unfortunately, he's not the same wrestler he once was unfortunately when he first came into WWE again no I mean he has, doesn't seem to have that creative freedom uh, and there's not enough time invested into that character that we saw in Impact Wrestling which I think is what really got that over because at first I mean a lot of people didn't 
enjoy the broken character it took time when we we saw how crazy they actually put a, a time invested in that storyline that people actually began to cling on to it and want it uh, to go wherever it went i love the package of the music i love the way that the stage goes with all the deletes and stuff i, I think as, as a look the 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 character is good but i feel that we need to go further in on the woken character i don't feel we're seeing enough and i think the same with bray white I, but, but with bray i think he just needs a change um he probably needs to go back to smackdown he probably needs a face turn and he probably needs to make uh you know, it needs actually to, to change his look a bit because something is, is not right. And it, it's really sad to see Bray Wyatt once a convincing character that had the whole world in his hands in the feud with John Cena really now is relegated to the point where he probably will be on a kickoff. Or if he's not in this match, the best he's got to look forward to is a battle royal. Yeah, it's a real shame. I think the thing is with Bray Wyatt, ever since we were going to see that Sister Abigail debut against Finn Balor, he's never really recovered, in my opinion. He's lost his momentum. That was his main sort of holding card to be able to do something different. And I think the thing is, what, the only way they can make this feud fresh is if they bring in Jeff Hardy and maybe tease his loyalty to which side he's going to be on. I'd quite like to see the Willow character in WWE, but I don't know whether that'll be a whole other chapter of trying to get legal rights again that will go months and months. To be fair. I don't know what you think. Would you like to see Jeff Hardy brought into this feud to try and freshen up and then maybe give Bray Wyatt a partner of some sort or some sort of, some sort of tag team partner maybe? Well, the rumours, according to Mr. Dave Meltzer, uh, and, and the Meltzer seems to always have, have his uh, opinions he's on, he's seem on, to play he's out. He's generally on the money, I've got to say, for Dave Meltzer. He, he, he is connected with WWE. He's not, not everything he says is exactly right, but most of what he will say, I, I would buy. I think he's spot on really a lot of what he says, but please go ahead and tell me. No, indeed. Uh, well, he believes that uh, Jeff Hardy will come in as brother Nero when uh, he does return. Okay. So uh, that's that's what's expected down the line. So uh, Hardy at the moment, from what I'm aware of, is not expected back until around May time. So I think it could be a bit too late for the dispute. But I do agree with you that maybe it would have been nice to have seen. I think, like you say, Bray White needs somebody to freshen it up. Wouldn't it be nice to see Bo Dallas just quit on the Mr. Arsh and, and become almost like his brother? Um you know, maybe that could be a, an interesting way to go. I don't know for a tag team of them too. They just need something because Wyatt now is really lost. And like we saw before with Sheamus, he got really lost. But now he seems to be uh, alive again. Now he's in that tag team with Cesaro as the bar. They seem to be a really strong point of WWE. And I think maybe Bray just needs maybe a helping hand rather than having the whole world in his own hands. Uh, and that would maybe just give him a little spice, uh, a little bit something to give him a bit of life and maybe uh, feel fresh once again on, on WWE programming. Definitely, definitely. I think you, I think you hit the nail that I have there. Definitely, that um, spot on. I agree with that. I think hopefully this will get done soon. But if it's if it is at WrestleMania, I hope it's the kickoff show. I really hope it's not on the main card because it doesn't really belong there. To be fair. No, I completely agree. Um, looking then, we'll go on to uh, the the main point then of uh, probably Monday Night Raw, which was uh, Roman Reigns, of course, uh, given the promo, perhaps one of the best promos of his career. Um, Definitely uh, calling Brock Lesnar uh, the B word and also saying how much he loves the company and people are sick of him only turning up when he feels like it, if it's the right city, if it's the right money. Um, and, and of course, he actually made reference to the fact that he was actually Brock Lesnar with Dana White on the day of the Elimination Chamber. Um, actually, which was a photo put on social media, didn't bother coming to the Chamber event, no showed on Raw. Now, uh, there's a few theories that have come out with this, George. And if you don't mind, I'm going to give those all to you right now. Yeah, of course, uh, Ring, ringsidenews.com has been very helpful uh, looking up on this information. Uh, again, Dave Meltzer with his information as well. Uh, and also PW Insider as well. Give them a shout out as well uh, on this particular uh, instance. Now, the suggestions are that uh, actually it was expected that Brock Lesnar was going to be at Raw. He was heavily expected for Raw. Uh, it was even in perhaps the first and second drafts for the show. It was expected to be a long back and forth face-to-face -face encounter with the two. Uh, the rumours are that the no show could be necessarily legitimate or if it is a work, then Meltzer said it's well played by WWE. Uh, and they were a bit sceptical of how this feud was going to be with Lesnar and Reigns. Reigns, of course, with the rumoured steroid problems that could be coming up, the allegations against him. Brock Lesnar as well with the fact that he may not re-sign with the company because his, his contract expires shortly after WrestleMania, although I believe there is a clause that could keep him there till August if WWE wants. This is why Braun Strowman is being kept currently free at the moment without any real creative plans going into WrestleMania because he possibly could be inserted into the mix some way, somehow. So that's all the rumours coming up today that at the moment Brock Lesnar was legitimately no showing Braun and when it was reached out to Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman had nothing to say. What are your thoughts, George? A couple of points. So, um, 
let's look at this logically in a, in a couple of ways. So Brock Lesnar definitely won't be on Raw next week. That's been confirmed. He is booked though for two weeks' time in Detroit. So I think that clearly, if he's not on that show, then then there are questions asked. But this very much reminds me of CM Punk's pipe bomb when WWE are trying to work the audience to a certain degree and tease whether Lesnar's long term gone and stuff. But the the, qu the query I do would have if Brock Lesnar doesn't resign. We've got a hope that he doesn't go out like he did when he when he lost to Goldberg and they had that match at WrestleMania with Stone Cold as the ref. Do you, do you remember that car crash of a match where neither wrestler cared? You've just got a hope, really, that uh, Brock Lesnar somehow signs. But please remember, three years ago, he did a similar thing where he was due to be at a Raw taping. He didn't show up. He then turned up at a UFC taping. And then a couple of weeks later, he then turned up on Raw and he signed a new contract. And all, everything was all forgiven. For me, Brock Lesnar earned so much money in WWE. The work schedule was good for him as well. It doesn't make sense for me to see Brock Lesnar leave. I think Brock Lesnar's there for a long time. I just think this has slightly been worked to maybe make it a bit more interesting than just Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, which it currently is, unfortunately. <laughs> You reckon, yeah. I mean, there is rumours that this also could be to get a better deal out of WWE, that and I think that, that would make sense as well. Um, I hope that it's that one. I don't really want to see Lesnar go, but one thing I would say is if he does stay, I really don't want to see him as a champion anymore because uh, he doesn't need to offer the championship belt. He needs to just offer big matches, a uh, big name in a big feud, and perhaps even when he actually loses, because uh, I'm going to throw out there now, he will lose at WrestleMania. Uh, to Roman Reigns um, or to if there is a mix up a, a change in the match up he will definitely still lose um, I would like to see him put over new talent this way we can finally see some more people actually elevate towards the top of the card uh, and then Lesnar can take a nice comfortable place in the upper mid card and then that way when he comes in it's still a big deal but of course it's it's going to help these guys that are there 365 and actually we might get maybe like a Braun Strowman that actually elevates himself even further. Uh, I know that you're going to agree with this, George. In fact, I, I think that maybe you may have even said this previously. Um, I would love to see if this match does go as normal as uh, Lesnar versus Reigns, that we see Heyman turn on Lesnar event uh, and actually side with Roman Reigns. Uh, would you like to see that? That sounds amazing. That sounds almost attitude-esque, but no, I don't see it. I think you're definitely going to get a Roman Reigns win unless we've all been fooled, basically. And I think what it would make sense to do is, if they're smart, they would have Roman Reigns win if they're not going to if they're not going to involve Braun Strowman somehow, and then obviously have Lesnar go away for a while. And I think you could bring him back then, bring him back when people want to see him again. At the moment, everybody's so used to Brock Lesnar being so dominant. He's obviously destroyed Braun Strowman previously. He's destroyed everybody's face. He's on this fantastic run now as world champion and does look pretty unstoppable. It just frustrates me a bit that you've got him potentially losing now to, to uh, Roman Reigns that not so long ago lost the Intercontinental title to Miz. Let's, let's not forget that at the back of our mind, that Roman Reigns, just because WWE are pushing him down our throat, doesn't mean that he's the right guy for the, for the championship. I think there's far better people that would be more credible. I, I think WWE have made a huge mistake, in my opinion, by, by giving us the... Roman Reigns, not giving us Roman Reigns, by giving us the uh, Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman match earlier, that could have been a far better WrestleMania match for me. And I think if you thought he had booked it right and kept Braun Strowman strong, other than having beat five people after losing at the Royal Rumble, it, uh, it doesn't really sort of help him really. I think ultimately WWE have sort of watered him down a bit. And this is the guy that clearly they're keeping on the silence because this is the guy they need to go with, I think, going forward for the moment. He's one of the most over people probably on the roster. He's clearly there. He's where the money is, I think, at the moment. I completely agree. If, if it was me, I think that uh, I would have put the, the Lesnar Reigns match at the Rumble. Uh, because clearly, this is this for me is the, the big money match. I think uh, Strowman is WrestleMania. He should be the guy winning the belt at Man U. Remember the time when Batista was the guy that was really over? Um, it was the organic choice. And that's when he ended up winning the Royal Rumble and winning the belt at WrestleMania over Triple H. I would have had what we're going to see at WrestleMania at the Royal Rumble, except I would have had Heyman turn on Lesnar, be with Roman Reigns. We could have had a heel Roman Reigns against a face Braun Strowman. Do you think there's a chance that maybe something could have become mainstream with wrestling again, should that have happened? Because at that point, you really would get a big buzz and a big pop with that Braun Strowman uh, becoming the, the, the uh, universal champion. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm fussy. I think I want to be shocked. I want something that's going to make me want to have to tune into or something that's, not, that's going to surprise me. It's obvious, not obvious, but it's just... The way that WWE have booked this main event, it just for, for me, it feels so forced. It doesn't really feel... It's one of the WrestleMania main events where you, where you generally have got a good idea of who's going to win, which I hate. I'd much rather go into a pay-per-view and have no idea of who's going to win. And, and then that way, when it does happen, you're generally shot. But for me, hopefully, you never know, maybe Braun will be inserted into this. But for me, I think it's, it's clear that Vince McMahon's Roman Reigns wish is probably going to win. I just hope that 
WWE are clever enough to pull something out of this in terms of the match. They're clever enough to do something. If they were smart, they would turn Roman Reigns heel in this, in this main event. I don't know how they would do that or whether he sides with Heyman, as you said, does something like that. I think that, that would be amazing. But I think the problem is it's not going to be nice if this ends WrestleMania ultimately to have Roman Reigns be booed out of the building, which might happen more than likely, probably. Definitely. And if, if there's still problems with the two of these, uh, there's a chance that the match may not go on last. Maybe not. Would you like to see maybe the women's title last, or would you, or do you reckon it will probably be John Cena facing the Undertaker last, maybe sort of as a Legends match, so to speak? If it's the Undertaker's last match, I would like to see it be Taker versus Cena. Um, if not, I think one day the women will main event WrestleMania. I think we're getting closer to it. I actually wouldn't be surprised actually if it was Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey uh, as the main event of WrestleMania. That that wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, would it be the right choice um, in this stage of the game? I don't think so. Um, but I think it would have enough mainstream attention to get what it wants out of it to be the main event. Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be interesting. I think the coming weeks, clearly a lot's going to happen. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to what they, see what they do with it. But no, uh, I think clearly at the moment, you just have to kind of watch, see where it's going to go. Clearly, this is the best time. I'm just interested to see what rabbits they pull out of the hat to try and make this year's WrestleMania a must-watch, which, for me, besides the AJ Styles-Nakamura match and a couple of the other matches we've discussed, it's it just feels a bit like another show. I don't like to say it, but it does to a certain degree. Yeah, and there's a, there's a couple of big moments, a couple of big matches lined in, but hopefully there'll be a bit more on enough to keep us going as we get towards WrestleMania. In fact, I want to throw a new thing in, which I'm going to call Superstar Focus, and just talk about one superstar very quickly. Someone that's not even, for our first mention of Superstar Focus, who's not even in the mix for WrestleMania yet, and I think would make a great opponent for Braun Strowman, should everything continue as normal. Uh, as much as I like Elias, I don't think he would be fit for the spot. I would like to see Samoa Joe when he returns. He's expected back mid-March. Uh, for Superstar Focus, then as we talk about Samoa Joe where could we see him fitting at WrestleMania this year oh that's a great shout that's the problem where do you, do you bring him back to win the Andre the Giant Battle Royal maybe I think that's a surprise entry but for me if they're going to bring Samoa Joe back they need to make him to, if he's going to have this shoe for Braun Strowman they need to make him unstoppable they need to make him similar to Braun Strowman in terms of being able to be unstoppable that's a match that, that's money though that match there. I think that's a really good shout I'd like to see Braun Strowman Samoa Joe if you get Samoa Joe involved though the one that was in TNA Impact Wrestling that was unstoppable and then put him with uh, this new Braun Strowman that can seems to be be had to take on the world. I think that's definitely a match that would would, would make people want to watch. I guess what you're saying is that if this match was to happen, you'd like to see it invested over time, yeah, not thrown definitely. together in a couple of weeks. I think why not? If you're going to book it, why not book it so that your first the first match is a draw, or the second match is a count out, or you just continue. Nobody can beat anybody, and then you eventually go to a last man standing match, and something happens where the ring collapses, and you just drag it out over two or three months. I think that would make compelling viewing for everybody. I think I'd definitely be invested in that. Sounds good to me. So that's your first superstar focus there. Could we see uh, Samoa Joe involved in WrestleMania? If so, guys, let us know what you think in the comments where you would like to see him slotted in. I think Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal as well is a good shout. I could see perhaps him being in that, perhaps even winning that. I think that there's actually a really good shout on that one, George. Uh, have we got any questions of any sorts? Uh, we haven't had any questions, but that's fine. I'm sure people probably will listen after. Um, I've got a couple of things I want to mention. I want to give a massive shout out for everybody to check out the forever wrestling page that's just been set up um clearly it's a good place to go for videos and sort of like-minded fans that want to chat about wrestling particularly this fantastic wrestlemania season i see you've been on there a fair bit steve it seems to be a good place to start really yeah, it's definitely, it's a, it's a very social uh, page. And uh, of course, when you've got uh, Worldwide in there, uh, I, I have to do it one time. I hope that they are doing it like this, uh, Forever Wrestling Worldwide. Uh, they've got to do that because it's absolutely awesome. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. It's a lot of uh, interaction, a lot of fans on there. Uh, just a bit of chit-chat with, uh, with Pro Wrestling. What, what more could you want? It's, it's good. It's a good place to social. And like you say, they, they post videos quite regularly as well. So, uh, you know, yeah, definitely give it a look. It's, it's worth a watch. And I hate to put a negative, but I'm going to have to do the announcement. Um, at some point this week, I am due to have another interview with the current LEP uh, general manager slash owner of LEP, Mr. John Joe Obrey, aka John the Revelator. Um, he clearly is, is demanding more time, so that's not going to be fun for me. I don't know if you heard the last interview I did with him. This guy is making my life hell at the moment. It's an absolute nightmare. Oh, just when we were, we were bringing the tone up, I mean, we have, we've had a little break. Now we've come back, and you think, right, okay, we're going to start afresh. And then he wants to get involved and have a more time. I, I mean, honestly, uh, I, of course, it's still going to be a great interview, George. But I, I do feel sorry that uh, that you've got to conduct that. Um, but I hope it all goes well for you. 
Mm, fingers crossed. He's the ultimate manipulator. I'm not really looking forward to that, but uh, please obviously check that out when that happens. Wish me luck, everybody. But no, is there anything else you want to sort of discuss, Steve, before we wrap up this return to SCW, the wrestling podcast? Uh, no, again, just to, to remind everyone to to keep an eye on, on the page and keep an eye on the YouTube channel as well. I, I always like to try and combine the two because, of course, there is content sometimes that you'll find on the YouTube channel that won't be on the uh, the Facebook page and vice versa as well. So if if you're first time checking it out, like the like the page, subscribe to the channel. Um, it's SCW the Wrestling Channel on YouTube. It's SCW the Wrestling Podcast uh, on on Facebook. So make sure to, to to like and share that stuff as well. Tell the friends, uh, tell the family, tell tell the partners. Why not get get everyone that you can involved, and uh, we try and spread the word because, of course, uh, the the more interaction, the more you know, the more content I suppose we give. You know, if we we see this uh, progressing very well, we'll continue to give. And um, uh, of course, you know, as well. Again, you're going to be talking to to John Joe again. I mean, that's going to be a must listen. You know, I'm, so, I'm and, sorry uh, to interrupt you, Steve. Please call him by the wrong, right name, otherwise he'll make my life hell. It's John the Revelator. He doesn't go by John Ober anymore. Oh, well, well, there you go, John the Revelator. Yeah. I do have to say that I do apologise uh, for that uh, if if you are listening. Uh, but um, listening. trust me, oh god. <laughs> well, you know, let's 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 hope that interview goes down well. Anyway, but uh, we we will wrap this up. Then this is the the first time we've uh, made our comeback here, and uh, I think it's been uh, a good interview. And uh, yeah, George, it's it's been great talking with you as always. Thank you for having me on. It's been a real a real good blast, and I'm sure we will do this again probably next week. Yes, I definitely think so. So uh, there'll be no set day, no set time, guys, but just make sure to keep an eye out. And uh, I'm sure if you keep an eye on the pages, uh, on the Facebook page in particular, we'll give you the date and the time, and uh, then you can come and check us out. So uh, that's all from us anyway. Uh, thank you for watching. Like I say, like, share, uh, comment as well. Let us know what you think as well. Give us the thumbs up, the thumbs down. And uh, yeah, we will see you next time on SCW The Wrestling Channel and SCW The Wrestling Podcast, first on YouTube and Facebook, respectively.